Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. The concept of sowing financial seed to a church or ministry for personal gain of any kind is not biblical, and people that preach this should be rebuked and avoided. So today we'll go through passages and show what they really mean. Let's start with the cheerful giver in 2 Corinthians 9. This passage is about giving to the poor. And Paul was speaking specifically about suffering Christians in Jerusalem at the time. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food is God, and he will multiply that seed. For what? For more giving to the poor. And our benefit is the harvest of our righteousness. It's not for Christians to have an abundance in our lives. We will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way to help others, not ourselves. So the term sowing here has nothing to do with sowing a financial seed to gain blessing in our lives in any way. The second passage we'll look at is the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. This parable speaks of a farmer sowing his seed. It speaks about different qualities of soil the seed falls on. And the seed that fell on good soil, and notice it's the soil that is good, not planting good seed. But the seed that fell on good soil produced a crop of 30, 60, or even 100 times what was sown. Some will say, aha, see, 100 fold. But this says nothing about money. The disciples don't understand this, so Jesus explains to them that the seed is the message about the kingdom of God and hearing the word of God. The crop they yield has nothing to do with money, healing, deliverance from demons, or any of that type of stuff. Now, in the parable of the weeds, we do see the term planting good seed. And when Jesus explains this, it's clear that the one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. So once again, this has nothing to do with planting financial seed or gaining anything from God. Now Mark 10 has another passage that false teachers like to use for this financial seed planting nonsense. Jesus starts off explaining how difficult it is for a rich man to enter heaven. Peter proclaims that they've given up everything to follow him. And Jesus replies by saying that there's no one that has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for his sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and lands with persecutions, mind you, and in the age to come eternal life. Well, that sounds pretty good. If you're sold out for Christ, you're going to receive a hundredfold of houses, land, and all these good things. That's got to include a hundredfold of money too, right? We have to remember that in context, the passage before this was Jesus counseling the rich young ruler and showing that he was not willing to give up everything. And then goes on to say how hard it is for a rich person to enter heaven. Giving up absolutely everything for the sake of him, Jesus, and the gospel was the requirement for these blessings. This isn't giving up things for the sake of gaining more money or gaining anything. Another thing to consider is that Jesus is not speaking in literal terms. How can someone have a hundred mothers, a hundred brothers and sisters? Mom and dad better get busy. Some could say that we'll have all these things as blessings within the family of God. But the point is that Jesus is speaking figuratively to convey the message that those people that leave everything for him and the gospel will be greatly blessed. And once again, money is not mentioned. Another popular verse taken out of context is Malachi 3.8 that says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. This doesn't the Bible bring um, tithes and offerings. It's not just tithes. The 10% is what truly is God. And it says that we're literally robbing him if we don't give that. So that, so if we don't give that, we're robbing him. And of course, they only read part of the next verse. You are cursed with a curse for you are robbing me. They skip the next part though. Who's robbing God? The whole nation of you. This is tithing, which is Old Testament, and the nation is the Israelites, not Christians. 
Another verse taken out of context by Oral Roberts is Luke 6, 38. It says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The first problem with this is assuming it's referring to material gain. And if we look at this in context, it's about judging and condemning people. Another verse about sowing is Galatians 6, 8. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Once again, this has nothing to do with sowing a financial seed for the purpose of gain. The bottom line is that financial seed planting for personal gain of any sort is not biblical whatsoever. And the people that are teaching this are encouraging greed and shifting the focus to what we can get from God rather than how we can serve God. 1 Timothy 6 sums this up. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. These are the very teachers mentioned in Second Peter 2, that in their greed make merchandise of us. If you have been deceived into believing these financial seed planting teachers, I hope this video has helped. Please repent and turn back to God's truth. We'll leave it here for today, but as always, leave your thoughts and comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless.